As we've already talked about, you can establish a grid and then control the rows and columns using your grid template rows and grid template columns. You can pass values in to control the size of the rows and the columns. We also have a few helper functions that will allow us to make our code writing much easier and far more efficient. Let's take a look at these. We'll be talking about the repeat function, which is used to repeat the number of columns and rows in a grid in a very succinct fashion. And we'll talk about min max. Min max allows you to define a size range between a minimum and maximum size. This is great for creating responsive websites. Here's the file that we'll be working with. I have a simple container that contains six items. All I've done so far is turn display grid on on the container. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to target this first container. We will add our grid template columns. Let's look at how we can make our code more concise using the repeat function. The repeat function allows reoccurring patterns to be written in a succinct fashion. We use this quite often when we're building with grid. What we can do is we can define how many rows or columns we desired, followed by a constraint. In order to use the repeat function, we write the word repeat followed by parentheses. In the parentheses, we'll pass in two arguments. The first argument is going to be the number of columns that we want. The second argument is going to be the size of those columns. So if I write 4FR, it's going to allow me to create four columns that are one fractional unit in size. We can also use this in different ways. We can go ahead and define a more complex grid using the repeat function. This time, I'm going to change the values in the repeat parentheses. I'll put two, comma, and I'm going to write 50 pixels and then one FR. If we save the page now and we refresh, you can see that I get a repeating pattern that creates a 50 pixel column followed by a one fractional unit followed by a 50 pixel column followed by one fractional unit. In addition, we can add another value that isn't part of the repeat. So if I add one more value, we're going to end up with a five column grid. The first column is 50 pixels, one fractional unit, 50 pixels, one fractional and 20%. And as I resize my page, you can see that the relative units, the fractions and the percentages are going to scale while the absolute units, the pixels, they stay fixed. You'll find all sorts of ways to incorporate the repeat function as you go about building your web pages. I'm going to go into my HTML and I have another container that I had commented out. I will uncomment this and if we refresh, here it is in the browser. We're going to go into our style file and this time we're going to target C2. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set up some columns. So I'm going to use the min max function. In the parentheses, I'll pass in 20 pixels for the minimum width. Then I'm going to put a comma and I'm going to say the maximum width will be 20%. I'm going to make one more column that will be 1FR. If we save our page and we refresh, I will get a two column layout. As I resize my page, you can see how my first and second column are going to grow. The first column will always take up 20% of the available space. And if the page is very small, it will never get smaller than 20 pixels. That's the minimum size. If we increase the minimum size to 200 pixels and save our page, you can now see that the width of this first column gets larger. It doesn't start growing until the page is able to accommodate the first column being at least 200 pixels, and then it can grow as needed. Min max is very useful under certain circumstances. It allows you to specify a constraint for any of your column or row values. Being able to repeat patterns using the repeat function and defining minimum and maximum sizes with the min max function will allow you to really be able to dial in your grid in exactly the manner that you want.